hate that video and I released that in 2016 17 I'm not even gonna link it in the description because it's that bad if you're not even doing that then there's no point of even doing multiple takes because you're gonna be there all year round yeah let's get into this guys strap your seat belts in this ain't no fast and furious movie but it is a Ricky Tiro podcast guys so let's do this so okay let's go let's get ready to rumble hello everybody and welcome back to the Ricky Tura podcast episode 64 that's right people we've been doing this for a month baby I can't believe it man well I can but like I didn't really expect it to happen this soon but I just did it because I thought you know what F it we might as well go for it in September so yeah man September was kind of like the 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 pre-workout you know we were just getting warmed up yeah we were just uh stretching the muscles we can say that we were stretching the muscles i said last week it was the rebirth of the ricky tura podcast um i've you know been doing this in the shop you know a bit of a different bit of a different environment what what was that noise i swear was that, was that me two seconds i swear i just heard something Oh, it's flipping Facebook memories, man. This isn't the time for Facebook memories for showing up in the podcast. Put my phone on silent. Sorry about that, guys. Facebook, man. Listening to everything you say. Um, So, yeah, man. You know, we call this the rebirth. You know, we're doing it in the shop. Different environment. I want to keep more things in the shop. More content in the shop. Such as the Ricky Tura podcast. Uh, But, yeah, how are you guys doing? Are you keeping well? Uh, I hope you guys are keeping safe. Wherever you are in the world right now, I really appreciate it. Whether that's one view, one listen, one click, even if you listen to a minute or less. I really appreciate whoever stumbles upon this video, podcast or any episode. Or even a short. If you come here from a short, mate, pat yourselves on the back. Uh, but yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue continue off um from last week's episode because guys i'm not on a red battery and uh, you know your boy was doing a cash and carry run last week and uh, i was debating whether to record or not and i know i was saying in the uh, episode that um you know i was on a red battery so I, I felt like i kind of rushed a little bit of it but i did i did talk um i did actually let me rephrase that i did make some really important points um, in there so yeah so shout outs to every single one of you that are listening and uh, who's been listening from day one if there's anyone here that's been listening from day one comment in the comments below um, and let me know uh, who's been here from April 2020 you know I know we took a, a good year and I don't know eight nine months off but who's been here from day one let me know and if and I mean day one by the podcast. Now, I know this will be no one, right? But who's been here from my first YouTube video? Who's been here from my first... Let me know what my first YouTube video was, if you're a real one. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's let's get into this, okay? Because I want to just uh, go back on a few points what I made last week. And guys, your boys made notes this time. What? Yes. Because I felt like... Last week was a little bit rushed, but you know what? We're coming back with a banger, okay? So, what did we talk about last week in how I create magic, guys? And this is just me personally. There will be other magicians that do things a lot differently. uh, And obviously, if you're in a different industry, you might do this a bit differently as well. But this is just what I've been through and just some knowledge I want to just show you how I do it. That's all. This isn't the perfect formula, neither is it the worst formula. It is just my formula, guys, okay? So, how I create magic part two, guys. Part two with Ricky Tura. So, yeah. What did we talk about last week? So, last week we basically just talked briefly. There was a brr in that brief. Briefly. Um, we talked briefly about, like, the idea so I kind of give the, the gave the Kit Kat idea. So basically, you just got to find what you want to do first, and it kind of it's kind of like your environment. What environment are you in? So I'm in the shop, so I gave like a Kit Kat example. What do what magic would I want to do with a Kit Kat? 
and I also gave an example like if you work at a cafe is there any sort of magic you can do at a cafe if you're a magician um, obviously if you're in a different industry adapt it to whatever you are in but yeah basically it's about finding the idea what environment are you in and what idea can you create from that environment uh, that's the easiest way really that I found because being in the shop for 99% of the time I've got so much inspiration around me and so much magic that can be done so as I said with a Kit Kat I could um, make it vanish, reappear, uh, take a bite out of it, restore it uh, could I turn it into something else and I gave a few examples of that, that which I've done in the past so make sure you check that out if, you, if you're not sure what I'm talking about make sure you check out How I Create Magic Part 1 which was last week's episode and then come back to this one but if you guys are still here you've listened to that one um, we did talk about the environment the product um, the magic what you want to create out of it and um, how the magic will affect the final video um, so basically will it will it look good basically uh, whatever you're doing uh, I gave the KISS method, keep it simple silly, for ideas, um, even before picking what you want to do, you can just write a hundred ideas down on a piece of paper, don't overcomplicate the actual process to what the magic's going to be, don't make it so hard for just a 30 second video where you've just overdone yourself and you don't even release it. And what type of video is it? You know what I mean? So if you're a cardist, is it cardistry? Is it magic for magicians? Cafe, f- coffee? Do you, know, do you know what I mean? What type of... you just got to get your point across very quickly as to what type of video. You don't want it to be a magic video and then all of a sudden it just cuts to being in a cafe and then all of a sudden it cuts to being, I don't know, in a parking lot or something like that. You want to keep it simple and get your message across as simple as possible. That's what I've found with my videos. Um, and I will give you examples on later on in the episode of videos that I'm not really proud of um, which I thought at the time was good but then when I look back on it it was absolutely shit so I'm going to give you some uh, an example of that as well um, but yeah I'm going to continue continue off and I'm just going to add a bit of layers on last week's episode and I'm going to add an extension onto what I've said uh, with some new ideas as well so um, yeah let's get into this guys strap your seat belts in this isn't no Fast and Furious movie, but it is a Ricky Tura podcast, guys, so let's do this. So, what's your style? So, so what are you? So, obviously, I'm a magician, but, like, what's my style? I'm a close-up magician. I like to do close-up magic. Obviously, I'm in the shop most of the time. I love to do magic in the shop. So, that's that's my style. And that could be for any... Any of you guys out there, if you're magicians, what are you? Are you a cardist? Are you a magician with cards, with coins, with rubber bands? What are you with? Um, and if you listen right now and you're like, well, Ricky, I, I don't know my style, you know? I don't know my style. But yeah, um, you just got to find it. You've got to keep trying different things. So all of the things that I said just before, whether you're a, like for the magicians out there, you're a cardist, magician, cards, coins, rubber bands, etc. You got to try all of that to find what your style is first Uh, but once you find it uh, after trying a lot of different things um, you you kind of know what your like niche is what your genre is of type of videos and obviously it will start off being different but then all of a sudden you'll kind of get that style like I'm picturing an Instagram profile in my head right now and it's like a beginner uh, finding their styles it's so much different stuff and then all of a sudden you've got this cool style where all of a sudden like it's just fits do you know what i mean so make sure you find your style how do you do that try a load of different things um for myself i tried street magic uh, i've done a youtube video on street magic uh, i think it was called connections uh, i've done stage magic i've performed at multiple stage shows in the past uh shop talked about that and other locations as well Um, it could just be at different like venues and stuff doing close doing close up or anything like that Uh, but yeah that's what I tried and don't get me wrong there's more that I love more than others but the shop is kind of like the style that I've stuck with and the style that's going to progress further and further on in the future so yeah make sure you find your style guys that's the uh, 
the first thing about how I create my magic and um, if you look at my Instagram profile it's it's a lot different at the moment but I had a style where I would just make different type of videos with music and then all of a sudden I started showing like magic gig stuff um, and then that was like photo wise but in, in creating magic wise it was more of creating magic with with music but then slowly but surely I started getting into the shop started doing magic in the shop and now it's just stuck with that since so uh, and I believe the video that I talked about last time and I did link it in last week's episode in the description where I did the uh, minstrels into M&M's I, I believe or M&M's into minstrels I think that was one of the first shop magic videos I ever did and uh, it kind of progressed on from there and I used the uh, Craig David what's your flavour um, as the whole running theme tune of of that uh, of that video but yeah guys make sure you uh, find your style and what I want to talk about is you know when you're creating let's say you found it you found what you want to create so let's say I found the magic I want to create I know my style I'm doing it in the shop so how am I going to shoot it you know what 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 are you shooting on are you shooting on your phone you, like have you got like a GoPro have you got like a DSLR camera like I'm recording this pod- podcast off right now uh, I'm going to call it podcast then uh, but yeah I've shot on everything that I've just said I've shot on a GoPro I've shot on DSLR and I've shot on my phone as well uh, funnily enough and I feel like if you're just starting out maybe a phone might be good uh, I was lucky enough to get this camera on my birthday a long time ago on my 18th I believe so I was just in love with my DSLR camera still am and uh, I've just filmed off there but uh, I don't think there's much difference now in the quality of video and photos really mobile phones compared to cameras Um, obviously I feel like the more you you get on and you want to do it and you know you'll do it consistently maybe you can get a a DSLR camera something like that or a GoPro Um, I just went straight to a DSLR but I have no problem filming off phones I feel like if I ran out of battery on my camera and on my GoPro I'd just still film off my phone I'd have no problems with that Um, obviously in this position that I'm in maybe with bit problems with audio but that's not a big problem Uh, but yeah make sure you know what you're shooting off first I like to just shoot with one camera Um, I'm lucky enough to have a GoPro now as well and I've filled off that that it's fairly new um, that GoPro so I haven't used it as much but I've been incorporating it into different videos and um, I made a coin video at the start of the year and I remixed the Doja um, song into um, an old an older song into that if any of you guys remember that song make sure to check it out i'll link that in the description for this that was on my gopro it was pretty sick quality i could tell the difference um on it and it was just so much more easier to carry about rather than having this camera uh but yeah make sure you know um what you're shooting on and uh, if you just stick with the one camera that's what i do and i just i do different angles uh on what i want to shoot but you want to know how your magic wants to go so obviously if you whatever you're performing if it's angle heavy like you want to perform it at a certain angle if you perform it at a different angle perhaps the the uh, final product won't be as good and maybe you might flash something there as well um, but if you are in general just creating something make sure you have the best possible angles with just the one camera and uh, see you just record it multiple times don't do it in one go and call it a day um as easy as that sounds it's not it's not as easy because i've just filmed once and then called it a day i've looked back on final cut pro and it's absolute dog shite and i kind of said to myself well i wish i filmed more than once or twice on the actual day so make sure you keep that into consideration that's what i do i film my magic multiple times and this isn't me revealing anything this isn't me exposing anything ask any magician um, have you filmed your magic more than once and come on you you'll have maybe the one percent of them saying well I kind of hit everything on the first shot but after they didn't so they've still recorded multiple 
if you know what I mean. Uh, but yeah, you won't necessarily get it on your first take, but if you keep doing it, keep doing it. It might take two, three, four, five, ten, twenty, a 10, 20, 100 takes, but until you get that perfect one for like social media and what you want to create, uh, then you can you can go from there. But you've always got to uh, make sure that the end product looks good. And, um, and yeah, uh, that's what I would say for how I create my magic and uh, not necessarily for cardistry i'd say i'd say maybe like if you drop the cards you can shoot again and that specific move you can get down to a t but for magic i would say 100 percent multiple takes no doubt about it um that's always what i do as well and um, you've always got to make sure you've got options there for what you want to choose on because one day you might look at it uh, in in pre- post-production and it'd be like you like it and then the next day you hop onto your laptop or computer you might look at it and you're like well I don't really like this anymore but I like the different the different take that I took so I've definitely been in that position before so make sure you do multiple takes Uh, that's what I always do and um, make sure you've always got options just to what what you want to pick at the end of the day that's that's you, you want to make your life easier you don't want to be getting up and reshooting because i've definitely been there and look sometimes you just got to you got to reshoot even if you do the multiple takes and you're like well i don't like any of them yes you've got to reshoot but really you want to be trying your hardest uh at the um, takes you do and you'll know you'll know because let's say you you kind of hop off early on your shoots and you're like well, I don't feel like I did as hard as I can, could, that's when you know you're going to have to reshoot. That's you, That's when you know. So make sure you try your hardest in whatever you're doing. That's what I do. I make sure to just put my everything into to all the shoots and see um, where the best end product will be. So, yeah, ha- has the magic been tested and performed so this is for all you magicians out there um has it have you practiced it <laughs> have you pra- as funny as that sounds it's not not everybody does it have you practiced it and have you performed it to the point where you can actually film it because if you're not even doing that then there's no point of even doing multiple takes because you're going to be there all year round trying to get the perfect take for that so yeah, that's that's the first question really you'd want to ask yourself and you'd want to practice it before you actually put yourself on to actually shooting it for multiple takes. So you need a few trial runs before shooting the final footage. F1 racers have practice runs, guys. So if you watch F1, these guys have practice runs before they actually do the race. Footballers train before the game, guys, come on. So even before the game's even started, the training pre-game... And even weeks before make sure you have your magic down to a t so make sure you practice your magic before you actually shoot it okay because you that last thing you want to do is put in a terrible terrible video out and i've been there but you don't want to be putting a terrible video out where it's like it's not your best work and you know you can do better and you don't want to be deleting it then because it'll just look appalling so please take that into consideration as well. That's what I did, guys. Yeah, and it was with the um, it was with the it was with the Instagram post that I did earlier this year, uh, where I did the coin spin on the deck of cards and I made it disappear. That took multiple takes, and I practiced that before a hundred. Like I'm not messing about like hundreds of times. Uh, I, I believe I, I filmed that in January, released it in January, but I started practicing that September. August, September prior to that. So let's just say September, October, November, December. Four months before. And that was just me just like in my room like loads of times. I probably got like test footage of it because I like to record what I practice. And um, yeah, dude, it's so many takes uh, for practice. But when it actually got onto the actual filming, it didn't take as many takes as I thought it would. And I got the uh, the best take as possible that I could do. So make sure you get your magic down to a T. Don't be putting out a, a, a bad video and regret it. So, yeah. So make sure, right, to my to my next point, guys. And listen, guys, we're 20 minutes in, guys, into this video. So if you're liking this video, guys, make sure to like, subscribe, share, 
review, you know, hit me up on socials at Ricky Tura, R I C K Y, number two R A. Uh, make sure to hit me up and see um, what else I've been got going on. I'm doing a few YouTube shorts now as well, so keep an eye on YouTube. I'm more active on there at the moment. So, yeah, make sure you, uh, you guys let me know that you're enjoying this. Uh, but, yeah, on to my next point. Does the final cut look good? I've had a look, but when I look back on it, it doesn't. It's progress, okay? So don't be afraid of putting it out. I know I've said don't put out a bad product, but that's just when you're practicing and you know you haven't put your all into it. But when you know you've put your all into it and you, you edit it, you release it, and you look back on it and it doesn't look good, don't beat yourself up because you did the best you could and it's the same with me. And it's just progress at the end of the day. I've had so many shite videos that I'm embarrassed to even watch now. Uh, but it's all progress. So it might take a few different projects in order to find your style. But the final product you like and you look back on. So you like it, like, over the over time, let's say your first project's shite, but then your fifth project's amazing, you'll look back on it and you'll be like, flipping hell, I've come a long way from there. And I've got two videos um, that I want to share with you. Uh, it is Game Over by Dave. I hate that video and I released that in 2016-17. I'm not even going to link it in the description because it's that bad um, for me personally. I filmed it in the shop, funnily enough, and my sister recorded me doing that, but... Um, yeah, it was uh, it was bad. It just didn't work out, and I knew the song lyrics and everything was going to be part of it. But but yeah, it just it did not work out for me at all. Uh, but yeah, so that was in like 2016, 17, and the most video that I love at the moment is a Follow God video, which I released a couple of weeks ago, and I love that. I always watch that video back, and to let you guys know, that's a six to seven year difference between them two projects. They're both cardistry videos, but it's a six to seven year difference, guys. So that, that game over was one of my earlier projects. I wouldn't say at the start, but I'd say towards the middle. And this end project, Follow God one, that I released, I absolutely love it. I play it back all the time when I'm on my computer just to appreciate. It's only a 30 second video, but just to appreciate, you know, what your boy's been doing. But yeah, guys, make sure you uh, don't beat yourselves up if you put your all into it and you still don't like it there's always time to improve it's called progress and editing guys i i want to i want to close this off guys this episode because we're, we're on 21 minutes now and i hope you guys are enjoying this by the way but i want to close this off on editing editing isn't easy right it's not everybody's cup of tea uh, but with practice you'll get better so don't edit the magic so that's what i try not to do and by edit you know what i mean magicians by edit don't edit your magic okay make it look as good as possible but as raw as possible at the same time so you don't want to cut in a place where you want to cut do you know what i mean in a place where you don't want to cut i mean to make it look suspicious you want to edit around the magic not the actual magic okay um, that's my my last point for you guys. I've just written a little bit of something um, here, and I've highlighted it in stars, and I can't actually remember what I put, so I'm going to just read it out for you and uh, end the episode on this. So taking inspiration off anything and writing it down has helped me with so many projects and will in the future. Please do this one thing, and you're at the start to bring it to life. And when you do, that's when you'll know you've created something special guys please rewind that and play it again because that has helped me so many times and yeah writing it down is so important and i've talked about that in the last episode in part one uh, but yeah writing down your ideas and always coming back to them yeah so guys i hope you have enjoyed this episode um I hope it's been a good one. I hope I haven't been too boring. But yeah, we'll see. I'm gonna make the I'm I'm getting more active guys on YouTube. Um especially on YouTube shorts. I'm starting to cut out a few videos. Not the best videos, but like I said before, it's progress. 
so I'm starting to put a few more on YouTube shorts. So it, it, I'd love it if you guys like the videos, subscribe to the channel as well, and it would help. I'm, I'm definitely pushing just one platform at a time at the moment, and YouTube's the main one. But yeah, um, thank you guys. Thank you for listening. I really do appreciate all of you, and shout outs to all of you as well, even if you listen to this, uh, if you got this far, pat yourselves on the back. And guys, that is the end of How I Create Magic Part 2. Um, please listen to part one and part two again um, if you're into that creative zone no matter what industry you're in I've just applied it to magic because magic is what I do and the shop is where I am so yeah guys thank you so much shout out to all of you my name is Ricky Tura guys have a great day or night wherever you are peace <laughs>